Good evening. We have 7 o'clock. Oh, yeah, 7 o'clock. 6 30. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Tom Quinlan. One to uh, a lot released. How many will be left on that? This is on Hillside or Megan's Way? Megan's Way. Way. This is the last lot of the list. The last one. This is the last one. Um, does it have the top coat on the road? Yes. Where does the water go? From lot seven, you know, for most of the most of the subdivision. Lot seven got the retention pile right there. Or oh, stays, well, stays right there. Yeah. Well, the, that Burke shoe design. Did they send you the? Yeah, uh, I got the letter. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> yeah. It, it's been designed for them. So the water stays on the property. Right. Doesn't go down anywhere right. else. Okay. <coughs> yeah. What number is this? Number seven. Number seven. Is this under the old subdivision regulations yes. or the new? The old. The old. The <coughs> old. Okay. Everything going to be in order for the Springtown meeting? I hope so. <laughs> so there are a couple of things that you don't have. Um, no one did the legal description of the, road. of the road. So the town is to accept a piece of property. We have to have a deed description of the property. Yeah, who done that? Looks like I'll be taking some more of your money. Uh, Randy has a program that does it, but why didn't he do that? He didn't know I needed that? No, sir. And the a other, lot of things I didn't know I needed. The other thing we're going to need are written easements for all of the drainage easements. <clears throat> Just having them on the plan doesn't make them so. So they'll have to be you as the owner or you, I don't know how you broke it up, as who owns what lots. But now they're individually sold now. Right, they were, but they were sold subject to the easements. Right. Yeah. So, question is, who who you retain the easements? Now you have to give them to us. Okay. So, so that could be probably as part of the same document as the the road, <coughs> but it just ha it hasn't been done. Right. Well, I'd love to, I mean, I was not aware of what I had to do, and I really got nowhere in the town. Hall. It's been a while since we've accepted away. It, um, <laughs> It, it, there's there are some of the steps laid out in the subdivision regulations, but probably no one. Well, I wanted a copy of that, and where do I get a copy of that? Oh, this? Yeah. What do you mean of this? Of that document. Do you have it, or do you get it at the town town clerk? Oh, 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 the blank a blank document. Yeah. Oh, we should have someone in the planning board office. Okay, but I went to the town clerk doesn't have any on file. Oh, okay. Yeah, <coughs> yeah we should have someone in the town in the mail in the town. <coughs> you know, what, what, for the new members on the board and probably for the audience as well, uh, we failed to come to an agreement and there was an effective compromise by your engineer who did, I think, an admirable job. Uh, we couldn't calculate all the drainage for every lot because we were unsure of how big the houses are going to be, where the driveways were going to be, how many trees are going to be cut down, so they have come back to us with a uh, document and it underwent peer review by Berkshire Design saying that if a house is put there, the drainage can adequately support the house as well as the road, et cetera, et cetera. So because it's built on a hill that it's built on, that's, it puts it into a kind of a unique category. That's why it was done. It's supposed to most land most lots or subdivision being kind of more or less on a flat land. Okay. And we've had no complaint from, you know, from anyone with the houses that have been done so far. So <coughs> is this, anyways. Is this something that they uh, drainage when they released each lot or just when they're on a slope? And this is the only subdivision we've had to do this with because it was on such a steep slope. We want to make sure that the water doesn't run onto somebody else. Okay, it cause a problem. And like he says, they've been doing it, and there's been no issues with actually retaining the water on property, and et cetera. And this is the last subdivision we have under those old subdivision regulations, meaning that we can release this lot before it is accepted by the town meeting. From now on, the last lot will not be released until the town meeting accepts the road. It's not that Mr. Quinlan has not been trying to get it accepted. He's yeah. already been trying for two town meetings, and information hasn't quite been there for whatever reason. That's another story. But he's, he, he wants the town to take ownership. Yeah. It's not like he doesn't want the town to take ownership. But he's going to get straightened up. Anyway, don't entertain a motion to release lot seven. So moved. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. So I will notarize this. Tom? Uh, I don't have my notary stamp with me. Okay. So yeah. you can pick it up at my office tomorrow, maybe? Okay, sure, no problem. Yeah, I'll give Bill some black copy to you tonight so he can give it to you. You, I don't need, need anymore. you don't need more? Okay. I don't need more. <laughs> all right, all right. I don't think I want any more. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. He's out of the subdivision right. business. Good night. Good night. Until the next time. Yeah. Chris Sawicki. All right. I want to revisit the change of use of the house to residential to commercial. Okay. I reevaluated the parking on the whole lot. And there was a bunch of reserve parking in back, and that, so we extended it out. If you look at the second page, um, extending the reserve parking out just in that area there actually goes far above what we would need for total parking. It's all been cleared and leveled land back there, and it's all well in front of the retention um, wall. You still have enough green space? Yes, it's on the it's on the first page on the bottom. It's still at twenty eight percent. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's still well above the twenty percent green space, um, and it's all cleared back there as well. So it's just a basically to change. And I used the car to the house the sixteen hundred and eighty, so that's the total gross square footage of the house. How many? Sixteen eighty. Sixteen eighty. I think that's what's on. It's on the last page on the property card. I oh, doubled okay. that and uh, added that in. Okay. What's the address of this property, please? 189 Russell. Thank you. The former Sears. The front the house. The house, well, the house next to it. Yes. So it's going to be paved parking and the drainage is going to go into the... Well, it's all reserved parking right now. The, the part that's in well, the... So it was calculated. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it was already calculated as reserved parking. We just, I just extended the reserved parking um, in the back. Reserved parking... Well, Jim, you want to explain it? Uh, when, a, when a building is put up, <clears throat> it requires two-for-one parking. Obviously, not every project that's put up needs a two-for-one, but they've got to have it on site. And if they don't want to use it, they don't have to. They can leave it as green space, but this needs to be included in the calculation, ultimately, that if you ever wanted to put it in, you could come back at a meeting like this and say, hey, I want to pave it because I need it for whatever reason and they can just go ahead and pave it and there's no site plan approval required or anything because it's already all the numbers were crunched on the original supposed to have been crunched on the original design so they've got the capacity but it's in everyone's benefit to leave a green space if you don't need yeah, it right, right. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So the plan is it's still and again we still have plenty of right green space. i mean and it saves them a ton ton of money if they don't obviously if they don't have to right. do yeah. that because it's just stays as yeah the goal is to right. just leave it in green space but, yeah. but then the idea that the reserve parking space cuts into the green space. No. The green the reserve parking does not count as green space. Does not count as right. Right. So right. It's, it's, so it's taken it. off. Right. So, it's, it's so yeah. functionally they have much more green space than they're required to have. We just don't right. they get we don't count the reserve right. parking right. towards it. Right. Somebody asked me what the when Tandem bagels is going to open. They're getting a little itchy and excited. Yeah, we're hoping we um, end of the year, beginning of the year, January. January is just uh, well, it's change of use. It was residential. residential. What if residential? So change of use is a trigger. Um, I've talked to the building inspector about it as well. I am not sure that we can we can waive it. It's under ten percent expansion. So there's no exterior alterations. It's less than, yes, I'm sh pretty sure it's less than 10% of the, yeah, the building. How much did you say? 1500? 1680. 1680 with a second floor? Yes. Yeah. And you're going to do both floors? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 1680. Gross. And so the, the, the Sears is 25760. That's the two times it, yeah. Hmm? It's, it's well, it's twelve eight eighty times two. Yeah, yeah twenty twenty yeah, yeah. five seven sixty, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, plus thirty three sixty. So, uh, 
ten percent is twenty five hundred. Okay, well, twenty five seven hundred, twenty seven sixty two hundred fussy, but you only got fifteen hundred or sixteen hundred. Sixteen eighty. Still, whatever. It's like uh, probably seven percent, six percent fixed tax rate. Yep, the total. Are you going to do any exterior alteration to the house? You're going to leave it just as it's going to be with office space or something? That's it. Signs? Maybe on the front door. Okay. Nothing. We'll approve. Every, we probably will approve everything but the signs. So once you get, once you decide on signage, you'll need to come. You will okay. already will need to come back. We to don't us. even have. Yeah, it's not major at all. So yeah, we'll come back to if we put anything on there beyond. I mean, would you a sign on the door? We are. But we'll have one on the other building. So. Also, we're going to include this little caveat. I've got a couple. I got it. Okay. Um, you are probably going to be exempted from site plan approval for the site plan approval because of uh, alteration less than ten percent. However, um, you will still need to go to any other de department for appropriate water sewer building whatever else you're going to do this is not a waiver of the need to go to see anybody else that has jurisdiction who, who did this calculation i took it off the original first year design group uh numbers off their print okay. i've been trying to reinforce the fact that in the future would just like to know who, who prepared it and sorry. what the date is yeah yeah sorry Okay. Um, you know, yeah, the data is only asked for it like 29 times. Well, he does have it up at the top. Yeah. Who prepared yeah. it? Understand. Okay. okay. So I'll make a motion to waive uh, further site plan approval. For one, this is 193? 189. 189, Russell Street. Okay. For conversion. <coughs> 189 Russell to office space. That's the motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, you would kindly step up here. Sign one of those to acknowledge you've received it. You're not signing to agree with it, just that you received it. And you take the other. 19? Yeah. Okay, and then the building inspector would actually have to, I have a form that he's given me to sign off on. He, Jim will give the building inspector a form from us plus this. Says, and then do I saw the form he gave me to fill out that I can give to him as well. Okay. So. Yes. I don't know if he, I, I don't think he's in tonight. And that's okay. Oh yeah, I'll drop it off. It's, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All good. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. Good. <coughs> Philip Myers. Okay. Um, I'm here to submit an application for special to get a special permit to operate in the local business zone um, I'm purchasing or to purchase uh, 37 Lawrence Plain Road um, the current spice company can, yep current spice company does uh, nope, um, we uh, I am I do want to just uh, confirm how many uh, how many copies do you have here I mean uh, five copies of each packet I believe is what we need. That and one yeah. more. Okay. Oh. I need all the all the copies. Oh, all the copies. All of them. Okay. Do you have the ability to make more copies? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I have I mean, it all in if, if you could format. Drop yeah. actually two more copies. Two more. Okay. Just in a planning board mailbox. Sure. Um within the next couple of days. <clears throat> That's all. Absolutely. That's right. You do that pretty yeah, easily. You've got um, butters, I got envelopes stamped. Okay. For all the butters, two each. Um, right. Perfect. Good. Yeah. 
Are there two sets in here? Two sets. Okay. Yeah, plus an extra set of labels. In case. That's um, the Slice, slice the, Factory building? It, it is on the Slice an Company. Do you um, There should be on that first packet. I handed you oh, there we go. the application yeah. form. So, um, so what Jim is going to do is calculate the filing fee. Okay. He's going to give that back to you. Okay. And you're going to, when you bring, you're going to pay the town clerk tomorrow. Okay. Or in the next couple of days. Sure. We don't handle money, so that's why you. you're right. paying yeah. her. Um, and you will bring her a complete set of the plans. Okay. In fact, um, if you can't make a copy in time, you can take one of these. Um, I can have a full set printed up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. actually, there's a little change in procedure. Sure. We had a uh, we had our uh, development committee meeting this afternoon, and the fire chief wasn't sure he had seen the plans for the hotel we approved. He said it has site plan approval already. Um, so the new system is that you are going to take two copies of the document set to the town clerk. Okay. The town All clerk right. is the wife of the fire chief. Sure. Everyone she will make sure chief. that he gets okay, his great. own copy directly. Okay. And <laughs> when it goes to when it goes into the public safety slot, it's, I guess it sometimes goes to the police, sometimes goes to the fire. It doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily always get to the chief. Okay. So, so we'll give an extra copy. So two copies to the town clerk and mm -hmm. two and copies in the planning board box. So only you, two for the planning board. Okay. Two more. So two you're going to bring a total Three. of four copies. Okay. Yeah, that can be done. Is it, what is the name of your company going to be? Um, we're still determining uh, the name of the company. So I just call Phil. Like, no, I kind of need to fill up my ears. Yeah, that's okay. for now. Yeah. And um, just for uh, confirmation, I was curious if we would be doing this as an amendment to the current special permit, or if it's a brand new. It would have to be a well, it'll. Permit. Your site plan <laughs> approval is still valid. There's no yeah. change to that because there's no essentially no alteration except for the. Uh, um, sign and stuff, correct? Right. We we are in a situation where the septic system that's is that's that's irrelevant. Okay. That's relevant. We're talking okay. architectural or yep, no site changes. modification. That's underground. Whatever you're going to do with that, that's another story. Okay. Uh, we're just looking at change of use. Yep. About it will be notified. It's a special permit unique to that. Okay. The original site plan approval will still be valid because there's no basic no change to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds good. This is. Uh, 37. 35 Lawrence Plain. 35? 37. Is that, yeah, and the, the town and the deed says 37, and the seller has the address as 35. So I tend to put both. <laughs> I don't call former. I'll, just put, I'll put 35 Lawrence Plain, former Spice Company. How's yeah, that? That's confusing to me, too. <laughs> that sounds good. And public hearing uh, December 17th. 17th. And it's going to be right. a Taekwondo mark. Well, um, we're going to do uh, fitness programs. Um, we have martial arts classes as well as. Uh, so, fitness, so it's going to be chain of use to fitness and martial arts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to know when I describe it in the public hearing, I want to be relatively right. accurate. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I have a, uh, in the project review, I have a full description. That's right. You know what John Kenneth Galbraith called? All this is going so on. You're, you're going to he's going to give copy to the fire fire department and police chief fire, well, fire department fire department he wants two copies but uh, Mike wants to be sure the fire chief wants to be sure he gets a copy so you're still going to put a copy in the public safety okay but that can go to the or you go put it in the police department yeah, the box. Police. okay um, but just we're gonna just try this out to see how it works. Okay. Uh, okay. So two copies to the town clerk, clerk. when I go to pay, um, and, and then two two more copies. Two more for copies to me. So you're gonna get yeah. a copy. I only need two more. Okay. okay. And so that'll go in the planning board mailbox, which is outside the town clerk's right. office. Okay. Great. Right. There's a big yeah. mail tower. Okay. Of, uh, okay. Very good. Great. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much, everyone. Jeff Squire, the oh boy from somebody. Okay. Yeah. Berkshire Design Group, um, here about 97, had uh, Russell Street, which is the Headley Garage. Um, so part of the story here, um, on behalf of Mark Krauss, who couldn't be here tonight, but um, trying to help him navigate the process, because I think he's getting conflicting information, um, different things, and trying to just get him to where he needs to go, and so I figured the best way to do it was sort of um, 
introduce you with what our suggestion was to him and just get your feedback before we submit anything formally. Um, I understand that a site plan application will be required for the change in use. Currently, it's still being used partially as a uh, auto repair shop garage, um, but obviously with other tenants, it's going to be a you know multi-tenant building, so they'll need to come to you you know for for um, change in use. Um, Providing that those uses are all allowed in the district, the the goal is to provide enough parking and improve the site enough so that it, it becomes more non-conforming. Right now, it's a pre-existing non-conforming site, so to try to make it as, as conforming as we can and serve all the various uses. And as you know, obviously the the adjacent um, restaurant Esalon building comes into play only because he happens to be. The business owner of that that business. He doesn't own the building. He doesn't own the site. Um, so he has no control over that building. He just owns the business. So part of his goal in purchasing the adjacent site was to try to um, try to provide parking spaces to alleviate the pressures on his business next door. And by doing so, he was trying to attract clients or, or tenants that you know have a minimum parking requirement. So all that said. So Where who, so who owns the building where Esalon is? is it it's, a a, it's a it's a third party. Third party company. Yeah. Okay. Right. So they don't have any control over the building, over the parking lot, over any of that. And so we're just trying to get them as much as we can, you know, with the adjacent site. So just by way of background, the sure. select board is actively taking up a proposal to start restricting parking mm -hmm. because there has been a complaint from the school department about the inability to sure. get a bus in there to service a. A student that needs yep. to be picked up so that that's understood that's been thrown into the mix yep no I just I know there's a lot of background to it and I know again I can Mark's getting conflicting information so I'm trying to just we can't shoot the message help help navigate the no not yet, <laughs> not yet. and so um, this is just sort of a, a sketch of what we had presented to him as a, as a you know a potential option um, it doesn't do anything with the existing curb cuts um, into the property just trying to avoid the whole DOT um, SDOT um, issue. Um, they've got one, two, three, four garage bays that they need to uh, retain access to. Um, two of them are for the Steve Lewis Subaru, one is for tenant in the rear, one is for deliveries for um, storage space that, that they currently use. So we need to keep those, maintain those access um, points. The hope is to um, rebuild or restore that existing uh, barn garage in the back for storage space. Um, he that, that may be the question. Uh, in other words, that wasn't calculated in when we were presented with a preliminary plan. Sure. And it was tight, not including that building. Okay. So. Well, so right now he, he's contemplating keeping it or restoring it or you know rebuilding it to be able to use that as storage space. So um, again, just trying to create some, um, you know, some business opportunity out of some of the existing structures, limited access. So what what's here is, you know, we've got the existing building footprint is uh, 6,700 square feet, roughly. Um, parking area, if you double that, um, we're at about 13,500. What's shown here is about 14,400, so it, it meets the two to one. Um, this is all on existing gravel and or paved area right now. There's an area back here where an old foundation or something used to be. It's raised up, so we're not going to, you know, we wouldn't propose to do anything there. Um, in terms of open space, calculating what's here, we're off by about a thousand square feet, but that doesn't include a lot of these little, you know, ancillary things along the edges. So it, it potentially. I think that should have more than a green space. Um, it, when you were mentioning the calculation, did you include the shed? Yes. Okay. Yep. There's 67, the 6700. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it does not does not include the shed. No. So we have to include that. If you're going to be, sure. yep. retain that, you'll need more parking. Sure. And there's there's areas like this that we didn't include in the parking calculation. So you know we, we understand that the, the two to one is required. So we're trying to get there. Um, and so it was. This is really just to, to introduce the concept to you. See if it, okay. you know. And then we would submit, you know, a formal site plan application with all the requirements. I'll give you my two cents sure. from from a, from a fifty thousand foot view. <coughs> yep. Basically, your plan looks pretty good. I don't like the shed. If you include 
include the shed. Um, you're not going to have enough parking with that mm -hmm. little space you put up there because it's not really mm -hmm. any good. That's just going to be a driveway. Mm -hmm. The owner of Eslon was told that if he, buy, if he uses that property, he needs to get the cars off the common. Mm -hmm. Period. No excuses. And if this plan does not include elimination of parking on a common, I will not approve it. Okay. Okay, and he was told. So uh, uh, he told. Yeah, so I, he, good, he, good, he was told that loud and promise. No. And, and I, I don't mean to be. I don't. If I, if, if I sound about that, I don't mean yeah, to sound yeah, about. No, no, no. Okay, but I want to be. I want to be straight out yep. with this. Okay, and he certainly can use some of the parking that he has there. He has to use the parking here for the Esalon parking. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, shared parking is legal. Mm -hmm. Right inside plan approval it says the in, in shared parking is, is, is encouraged. Right. So there's not a problem with any of that. Um, but getting off the common is absolute period. Mm -hmm. So there has to be, <clears throat> at, at a minimum, a, a signed package and a plan to yeah. you know, redirect. Yeah. So yeah, in, in terms of what we could convey to him to help the process along, what I mean, what what would be the mechanism to? Oh, you know, he was here and he told he, us he, he was going to do something. Yeah, about he, it. he knows about right. this. I mean, how do you? How, he's ignored. I mean, how he's do ignored it, which apparently I, I, don't I don't know. We're not designers. Yeah. We're not. We, we aren't going to design and tell him how to do it. We're telling him and you the end result needs to be this. However, it's accomplished is up to the designer and the owner of the business. Mm -hmm. Okay. The fact that he says he doesn't own the business, he has no control over the building. That is absolutely agree. Mm -hmm. However, he has control over his business, and his parking is his clientele. He has control over the parking more than anybody else. He can direct them. Un understood. Because um, if he can't, mm -hmm. he's the he is the most. I mean, important. Yep. If the town gets involved and they force the issue, it may not be pretty. Sure. I guess, and they just plain. I'm not. I'm not arguing the situation right. at all. I'm just trying to think. You know, as, as what would our recommendation be um, in terms of how much control he has over some random person driving down the road and parking on the common, whether they're going to the restaurant or somewhere else? So, somewhere else is irrelevant. The people, but, but, that, the people that are parking on the common adjacent to his business are 99% his clientele. So I, I think the town will be helping out. Yes, by putting so up if, some right. sign, the no put, parking sign. So the no town, parking. right? Because that's yeah. town property, obviously. Right. So yeah. he can't just do whatever he wants on town property. Correct. Understood. So well, he has been. There's. He has been. He has his, been. His customers have been. He, and he's been encouraging it because he has not been discouraging it. Therefore, he's guilty by association. So the last time he was here, he told us he was going to make an effort to stop it. He mm -hmm. done nothing. Yeah. So that tells us, at least me, how he views this board. You know, I think we got to be tough on this. Well, you know, I, I think he's trying to get out to his customers at least that there's no parking on the common. Again, I, yeah. I just, I don't no, know I, how I, I have seen nothing on his property to indicate no parking mm -hmm. on the common. Sure. I mean, granted, he can't put signs on the common, but he can put signs on his property that says, "Please do not park on the town common," and there is nothing that indicates mm -hmm. that. So he could also. So we can. Go to the meeting, select board meeting tomorrow night, where this is on the agenda, and he support could be, and ask for no signs. Sure. Ask for That's signs right. to be put up. Offer to pay for signs to be yeah. put up. Sure. Yeah. So, Understood. you know, I mean, the town is certainly willing to work with the gentleman mm -hmm. to make sure we call come to the same end result. Sure. Um, it's not like. You know, you do it all. The, the, the selectmen and stuff are willing to well, help. Sheets that he signs involved. just to give yeah. um, and not said. Okay. Okay. That but as far as the overall thing you've got there, been trying to yeah, the overall, you to, mm -hmm. the, the overall yeah, view looks good. I still think this, this, there's that shed's going to be a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll okay. Um, what will you know, and obviously you'll need to dress up the appearance of the of the old yes. and stuff like that. Yes. Well. Yeah. How many would TDR apply here if, if he wanted to keep the shed? I mean, you just give the town some money? He, he could, a TDR could apply here, yes. Approximately, how, how much is it per acre? 
9,000. 9, 9, 9, the lab was the last count. So what, what, how much additional space are we talking that he's going to be shy? You make that calculation. Not much. Probably one eight. That calculation. Maybe one that's one that's, one the, one that's one the option to keep the shut. Yeah. yeah. But if we can't get the two to one. Yeah. 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 Two to one. Provided, provided yeah, there's enough that. parking to yeah. begin with. That's that's <laughs> yeah yeah. We want to. We're not going to give TDR if, if you're short on parking for mm -hmm. the need. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you know, depending on what the uses are. Exactly. That's that that that's key. Look, right now, um Steve Little Subaru is out there. He probably I think he's using six no. His his agreement is for ten spaces. Right now the back is, is four spaces. Right. <coughs> and so there's fourteen, so whatever's left over conceptually is would be available yeah. for and, and I I don't think I've ever seen if Steve Lewis Subaru actually using it now? Um I don't believe so, no. Right, okay. I, guess, right. I haven't seen anybody, any, hardly any vehicle back there for yeah. Steve, Steve Lewis. At least, at least according to Mark, his, his contractor's agreement with them is for 10 spaces only. Okay. So. Okay. Yep. There was some question as to some of the uh, permits, mm -hmm. and he said, well, I have got permission from the planning board, that, but if you heard yeah. us before, mm -hmm. that we, we will give permission for site plan, but that does not necessarily mean he has carte blanche to do anything he wants within the building. Right, understood. And I think that's where some of the confusion came in. So we, I, I just sort of, you know, I said anything that's inside the building, code related, that's building uh, inspector. Okay. They, you know, you're yeah. going to do water yeah. department, sewer, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. This is site plan, this is about the use, and so I'm just trying to walk him through the process a little bit. Cause I think yeah, some apparently there forward. was never an oil water separator in there. So that's correct. That has been added. Plus the eyewash, he wanted to use the bathroom, yep. which is you know, down the steps. So if somebody gets something in the eye, you kind of need the eyewash. Yep. Yep. For those, those, again, those are all Board of Health yeah. and yes, building exactly. code issues. And, you know, we have jurisdiction outside of those <coughs> walls. Anything inside is a whole, totally out of us. I realize this is a, you know, just a quick mm -hmm. schematic. Uh, is it your expectation that when this, when you move the design forward, there would be some kind of dedicated protective uh, pedestrian path? So Can't we not over. To we the talked about that. Yeah, I mean, we we certainly talked about it, and I was, I was, I was contemplating showing something on here, but I, I just needed a little bit more time to think about it because the thought process being that if somebody over here is trying to go to Esalon, right. they're they're just going to cut through here, and there's really only a you know a, a, a small area that we could really put any dedicated pedestrian aisle. And I don't agree if there was a central corridor we could provide. Is, is there a parking? Be good. In a parking sidewalk. Oh, sidewalk. No, or, there's no sidewalk there. There's, this is the one stretch from here to yeah to to West on East Street. Yeah, is 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 the one section okay. that there's no sidewalk. Yep, it's on this side of the street only, the north side. But they're going to put a sidewalk on both sides in the center of town all the way to the malls. <laughs> so, will Mass Highway, yeah, I, I, are they content to, to stay out of this? I, I mean, we're not proposing any change to the curb cuts. The use really largely stays the same, um, at least, you know, for all intents and purposes, if they continue to use it for a garage. Well, you may be looking for a letter from Mass Highway because. Uh, Pre-existing non-conforming use usually doesn't apply to mass highway. Right. right. And they typically won't review anything unless you're changing alterations in the state highway layout, which you know we like to avoid. So they just may want one curb cut, or, or so a letter or some verification that uh, you did approach them. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I'm not sure they would even comment on anything if it didn't trigger review of anything, but <clears throat> we can we can certainly try to reach out to them. I thought they had uh, more control. If I mean, our experience is if you don't if you're not modifying anything within the state right of way, then they don't have any. That the state right of way. This this is the right of way. Yeah. So this is all you know, out there is is paved right now. These are new, you know, relatively new granite. Curved islands. Okay. So those were put in by Mass Highway. Right. right. So they when, they when this modification when that widening happened. Okay. So yeah. they acknowledged that there were three yes. large points of entry into onto the site. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess if they put the curb, if they put the, uh, the little mark, the little islands out there, and that's. And we certainly, you know, we're not proposing to park 
anything within the right of way. So that's certainly within their jurisdiction. It was my understanding that they could not deny a curb cut, but they could alter curb cuts depending on egress. They won't deny you a curb cut because that right. would be a, a, a regulatory <coughs> taking. Yeah. But they don't have to give you two or three. Right. They probably wouldn't allow this under current situation or yeah. as, as a new request. But okay. So to your understanding, then, if you sent them a letter saying we plan to do nothing here they wouldn't even review it, as opposed to maybe saying, well, we'd love to see you reduce the number of curb cuts. We, we don't want to get involved in that. Yeah, that's not our... We, we just, no, no, we, yeah. but we, so we don't cross that line. Okay. But would we ask for a letter? I think the fact that they made their improvements on the basis of existing conditions is probably all that, all that we need. Yeah. Yeah, there is the MEPA control the mess, what is the projects below the threshold? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, it is and it has to have so many cars, yeah, and, way below that, and that would trigger. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. the problem is that it, there's going to be more traffic in and out of the site when this is used as a parking lot for a successful restaurant than when it was used as an auto repair, yeah, and for whatever yeah. else happens to go in there in the other couple of days. Um, but it's not going to be See, that's horrendous traffic either, I can't imagine. That kind of gets into a tricky area because if somebody says, well, I'm going to have an auto parts store there like was previously there and a meat market before that, you didn't need the parking. But now they convert it to a restaurant and that's the problem. Uh, well, and and if, if they meet the parking requirements for the site, the chances of the thing being filled up, I mean, to, for, for Esalon to park cars there, I mean, how many cars would park on a common at a time? Half a dozen? Ten? Yeah. Well, the workers can park there, too. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So, you know, he, he doesn't, um, I don't think he needs 30 parking spaces for Esalon. My guess is he needs somewhere between six and a dozen. Okay. Um, I don't think I've ever seen more than really 10 cars parked on a common, but I mean, I don't yep. see it all the time. Or on the street, so it's not yeah. just on the common, it's, it's on the street. About noon on Sunday. Are there, is there a lot of cars on the street? On the, on the uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't counted them, okay. but that's that's one of their uh, Sunday brunches. Well, one of yeah, their biggest but, but on Sunday, more than likely, little business may not be in session either, depending on what state. Yeah. So, and, and we've been thinking around 20 spaces, 20, 25 spaces left over for us on specific. Okay. So, we've got so capacity. you know, um, <coughs> uh, you know, a, a lot of the parking, like, you know, to my point, if you need TDR, well, to, yep. to, to, to grant TDR is not carte blanche, we let to know what the tenants are, mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the traffic going to be. And he's, from what you're saying, it sounds like he's taking that into common when he's designing for his tenants. Yes. So, you know, we don't want to, jump too far ahead but you know you kind of got our opinion yep our, our, which I do you, did you get what you were coming for? I think so yes okay. yeah I think I just I, it was more getting your responses to this and knowing what the, you know what we need to do yeah. um, to move forward but I'm just the, trying to help him. one thing he was talking about a co coffee roasting uh, plant or whatever you call it there and Jim there was a question that you were raising regarding the odor and is it the biggest thing about the coffee roasting is what is the odor? Mm -hmm. um, I know that what's it, over by Keats of Lumber, uh, rails. Rails, rails. Rails, rails roast their coffee there. Mm -hmm. um, and if you drive by sometimes, you can smell the coffee roasting. Okay, but first of all, it isn't an industrial zone, so it's a permitted use. That's number one. Coffee roasting is manufacturing. Yeah, we probably could call it a business because it extends to that business here. But over there, there are no residences nearby. Sure. Here, you're, you've got a bunch of them. Um, I don't know if you've been roasting any coffee there. I haven't smelled it when I, the few times I've driven by. Nobody's complained. Um, but if he does decide to roast that he's not doing it now, or if he's roasting now and there's no odor, then whatever he's doing, he's doing properly. Okay. That's the biggest concern if you're going to roast coffee. Sometimes there's a, you know, once in a while roasting coffee is a nice odor. But to smell it all the time was a different story. Yep. 
so I can certainly try to get some clarification. Yeah. Okay. So we'll plan to submit okay. a site plan application. Yeah. That one yeah. of Thanks for giving us okay. a preliminary look. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Encouraging the, the owner to go to the state. Um, no, no, I'm advising him that there is one. Um, we're at least two weeks away from filing a plan at this point, so uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Pyro. I have plans for you to review and sign. Yes, bring them on up. It's for a town place at 230, uh, 237 Russell Street. That's the, uh, by Aldi, right? No, this is, oh, this is near the, uh, currently the roadway. Currently the, the roadway, got to tear it down and put the yeah. up. So these were prepared by Berkshire Design. Yeah, this is just the one to keep one on a site. Yep. One, one for the plank, one, one, one for the thing. Yep. This is just something that the chairman needs to sign the front copy, correct? Correct. When does the action begin? Most likely next November. We were going to start this November, but we decided to go one more season and then start it. We just finished the other hotel. We so we to to the we keep them both. Uh, one stays one stay on, the, on the building site. So who generated this? Berkshire Design? Correct. Yes. Can you ask them to send me an electronic copy? We'll do. I believe I have to also give copy to the planning board too. I mean, the planning board, the building inspector. Building inspector, yeah. correct. Okay. So one needs to go to the building inspector, and the other one will stay on site in your construction trailer for use as needed by whoever's going to be looking at the, one, the building inspector, somebody wants to see one. Okay. okay. All right. And Bill, Bill gets electronic copy, we're all set. All right, thank you. Good, thank you. Take care. Mr. Iser. It's not too late. Well, if you want it to be, we can go home. No, I don't want it to be, because I, I've got to get this done. <laughs> and our Mountain Road. Uh, it's Bar oh, Barstow. Barstow oh, Bar we have a letter from, uh, this is what come out of APR? Uh, 61, maybe. It's out, of, out, of, out, of, out of 61, 61A? I'm assuming so. Do we have a letter from, uh, no, no, that's the wrong one. Where is it? Here it is. We have a letter from Longview Farm requesting uh, they want to take a land of 61A, which is this right here, and requesting the planning board review this as soon as feasibly as soon as feasibly possible and alert us to any issues and next steps. Okay, so I'll leave the leave this for now. I have a beautiful colored picture to help you understand what's happening here. So if you take it out of 61A, how many years back did one go that we calculated the tax code? I think it's five years. I don't, I don't know. I think it's five years. I think it's five years. Okay, so what we're doing is creating one new lot. Although on the plan you see lot one and lot two. What is shown as lot one is basically an existing lot where Jimmy Barstow's house is, number 41 Mountain Road. So that, his existing lot is this yellow. The orange okay, lot. Mount, Mount Road, this is 47 goes around like this? Yes. Okay. So. It's out there, the intersection road over here. Yeah. Okay. The orange lot is what we're creating. There was not enough frontage to create this lot. So what we're doing is taking 13.65 feet from Jimmy Barstow's lot, shown as parcel B to add it to the frontage here to give us the 175 we need. Then on the other side, I have a pink triangle that is being given back. So Barstow's long view is transferring that to Jimmy to basically make him whole again. He doesn't need it. He, he doesn't, he, he's more than adequate with frontage and area, but just to make it equitable, if you will, they're trading triangle for triangle. So. Again, we're having a new lot one uh, and a new 
lot two, but really lot one is existing with a couple of modifications. And if that's not confusing enough. But this is the land coming out of 61A and this little piece over here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We don't we don't get, get any more involved in a 61A than that, that bill that uh, correct. I think you're supposed to get a, a notification of it being removed from 61A. That would be this. That notification coming out of 61A. I would think that that would be adequate notification. I uh, really got to go to the board of selectmen. Right. I think I, I don't know if he's aware. I mean, I've never. I don't think I've ever dealt with one where we've been before you, where you've questioned the 61A. Yeah. So I, I don't. I've um, never been through the process. Uh, yeah, it comes to us, but we don't have to have a hearing on it. Right. Um, the we don't even have to have an, necessarily an agenda item on it. Although I would be happier having an agenda item. Um, Joe, you want to add on 61A? So 61A okay. is a <laughs> state program that allows you to have your farmland, as long as it is at least five acres in size, taxed at a reduced agricultural value without requiring you to actually sell or divest yourself of the, ag of the development potential. So it allows a farmer who does not want to just sell development rights to the APR program to take a, um, to apply for reduced tax. The trade-off is that um, if you put it into 61A, there's also chapter 61 and 61B, open space and forest management, as well as agricultural. Um, the taxes are reduced, but when you, if you choose to take it out, you have to repay a period of time, and I think it's longer than five years, it might be seven years. You have to repay the yeah. difference between the ag value and the market value for the past seven years. And in addition, when you put it into 61A, you are giving the town uh, and by extension, a, uh, uh, a land fund, a right of first refusal to buy the property, which is how we got the property of the fire station is going up on, on off of River Drive. But let's say that they're being offered ten dollars for the land. Yeah. If the town wanted it and came up with the ten dollars, they could buy the land out from underneath people that want to buy it right here. Most, most 61A property in town, the town probably wouldn't want. Yeah. It's not all, very minor part of it is developing. Mm -hmm. So you, you, in this case, the fact that, that the town, that they're selling off a building lot is something the town would probably not have any interest in. But the town still has uh, 180 days to decide whether it wants it or not. So there is a waiver request, presumably pending before the select board, to waive the right of first refusal and to waive the 180-day waiting period. And but your and the Hadley box is that's part of zoning that to have you build one. 150 by 150 was one point yeah. touching the road. Okay, so you've got yes, yeah, so you don't get some weird shape long. That's right, right. right. exactly correct. It was initiated. Yeah. Okay. Joe can play how we can for the box. He put his head up on a piece of paper. And <laughs> 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 uh, but it, it's not without controversy in certain towns. Southampton, I believe, is one recently where a somebody was going to take out a 61A, and it wasn't a subdivision, but it had to do with some business. And they didn't want that business to expand the neighbors. So the neighbors forced the issue upon the selectmen to buy that land. So uh, 60, 61A is farmland, 61B is woodlot preserve. So you have a similar clause, for lack of a better term, if you have woodland, it's called, it falls into another protection of lower taxes. With the same stipulation, right of refusal, lower, lower valuation, lower taxes, stuff like that. Okay. But 
both of these came almost together. It was a timely fashion because there were many farmers that just couldn't afford, let's use Route 9 as an example. If you were farming Route 9, uh, you couldn't afford the taxes by you know, growing hay or corn. So the farmers are almost forced to sell. So that option came along when the APR came along as well. So uh, it did give farmland some break in, as well as woodlots. Yeah. yeah, I'll make a motion to sign the APR, to sign the uh, ANR. Okay. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We don't sign the small ones. You know, no, just the big ones. I just wanted you to be able to see what was going on. Thank you. And I think by signing it, we are functionally <coughs> going along with the uh, removal of the property. Assessor's office doesn't necessarily know who signed it. Yes, they, get, they get a copy. They oh, get a copy. Oh, okay. we, get, we get two copies of the papers. Okay. One goes in our file, one goes directly to the assessor. The day after tomorrow, this building will be on the tax rolls. <laughs> you laugh, but that's how they do it in our damn Well, I don't laugh because I know it, it, it's quick, happens quickly. So one thing that you'll probably see before long, Mark, is that someone will come in like this with a plan, and then um, uh, two months later, Randy will be back with a revised plan. Uh, because, well, that really, they didn't like how the lot lines actually laid out. and. Um, or they'll get they'll be very prompt about getting it taken care of, getting it signed, but then the deal may hang for six months before anything actually happens. And I found out in, in a similar situation in Northampton that uh, when as soon as the signed plan comes from the planning board to the GIS department, they change the tax maps on the basis of the plan without regard to whether there's an underlying deed. Yeah, Amherst does the same thing. And there's stuff on their GIS that, I mean, I, I know I did a plan, but nothing ever got transferred. And yep. So it's very, very confusing. Uh -oh. You got your... You got the form A's. Okay. So I got, I got, you got your two. You got it. Good. good. All right, great. Thanks so it. much. That's it. Uh, Thank that you. Was, that was it. 41 Mountain Road? Yes. Yep. Uh, or it's next to 41 Mountain Road. Yeah. This sign, so um, actually, you want an extra copy? Do you have enough copies there? You don't need to get any. Yeah, that one back. You want, you want to sign this one? But that was one of those on the envelope of the letter. We got more than enough. Okay. with Tom about further requirements for Megan's Way. Okay, yeah. Uh, affordable Housing Trust. So I contacted uh, Attorney Reedy and asked him what he is holding for us. The number I uh, highlighted, 350000 right, is the total amount we will realize in the affordability set aside from the development of East Street Commons. Right. Uh, he presently has $264,000 because not all of the lots right. have been conveyed. Um, 
I also consulted the treasurer. We have 220,000 in CPA funds uh, for community housing. And community, the community housing set aside. And community housing is defined as low and moderate income housing for individuals and families, including low or moderate income senior housing. And then there's a definition of low income housing, annual income less than 80% of the median, mm -hmm. and moderate income housing, annual income less than 100% of the median. Um, so that 220,000 plus 25,000 that was voted you know, to go into it at annual town meeting, which is not included in the 220,000. So we have a grand total, we're looking at a grand total of $575,000 in uh, affordable housing money. And we don't have anything, any mechanism in place to deal with it. Right. So that's why I wanted to, uh, uh, and maybe not get very far with it tonight, but I wanted to uh, reopen the discussion of setting up an affordable housing trust fund, municipal affordable housing trust fund. Uh, I think we are at the point that uh, when we first adopted or we first considered the bylaw at the time we adopted inclusionary zoning, we didn't have a penny Correct. in the pot. And um, uh, we the subdivisions that we have approved, uh, the Quinlan subdivision was beneath the inclusionary zoning threshold. The Bercume subdivision went in before the affordable housing uh, inclusionary zoning adoption. Right. So the only subdivision we have that is affected by the inclusionary zoning is the one that Peter Gelinas did off of Shattuck Road that just has a one unit uh, contribution. But obviously the contribution from uh, Barry Roberts is is big and added to what we already have. Um, uh, I think it's time we figured out how to... I'd like to say the contribution of the people that bought the units over there is great. Well, whatever. Uh, well, it's it's, uh, it's a wealth transfer. That's, that's right. It is. Well, yeah. We're clear about that. Yeah. Anyway, the the only problem, I mean, one of the issues with a housing trust fund is that there are some complicated requirements by the state of annual filings and everything else for that. If it dips into the Community Preservation Act money. No. I don't think we have the same filing reporting requirements. Um, I printed it out for what it's worth. What are the requirements? There's a lot. Well, what, what, yeah. Annual reporting, so, annual... That's very easy. You, you, this is a statement of what the trust assets are as of this date. No money was spent. This is the amount was earned uh, in the discussion. Very okay. simple. I, I don't believe it's that simple. How, how would a trust fund work? I'm, I'm trying to understand what... what you're, you're going to have a committee. I mean, the money. So you're going to put this money into a trust fund. Into a fund. And then what is going to happen with said money? In other words, uh, I just use the town because it's easiest that way. The town wants to put up some affordable housing units, and like they did for the stuff behind Golden Court. Mm -hmm. You could use that money to put up those units. Let's say there's 500000 in the trust fund. You could withdraw all of it and put it towards that. The terms of the trust will tell you what you can do with the money in the trust. But the, is it only the town can use it or can no, no, private no, no. It, it, can, it, it can be doled out to individuals, to corporations. Um, it can be utilized for anybody. There, there's, there's guidelines in the state affordable trust fund guidelines. That, that, tells that was you. a good, good question because let's say a set of apartments is coming off their their 40b housing in other words they have a certain number of years and they can go into market rate if all of a sudden uh Amherst did that it's you can contribute a certain amount from the trust fund to that individual to say if you sign for another 10 years 
we'll give you some money. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, well, that, that's because we are well above the ten percent threshold, and that ten percent threshold is kind of a a guideline. Most towns around here don't even come close to ten percent. Sunland's got one percent, but they're putting up some right now. Uh, you don't have to do anything with the money. You can just sit there for ten years or twenty years. You don't. Yeah, Danny, you could doing. you could build it up. So yeah, among sure. other things, you can um, you can uh, use the stream of income from CPA, for example, uh, mm -hmm. for uh, funding debt service. So in the example Jim gave of putting up actually constructing affordable housing units, you could apply for grants, take out a mortgage, and um, use the stream of income to pay the, the debt service on that. Um, another item that we've seen is that you could um, <clears throat> you could apply it towards uh, some infrastructure needs to direct affordable housing where you want it to be rather than where the 40B developer wants it to go. Uh, the example we were talking about a couple of years ago, it never went anywhere, but um, we could, for example, use this money um, to uh, abate lead and asbestos at North Happy Hall and pay for the installation of an elevator and then lease the property to a developer who would put in senior housing, affordable senior housing. Not having to pay from dollar one, the developer could more likely keep it affordable if we did some of the base work. Do you have to be extremely careful due to the fact that we've got CPA funds mixed in with? Yes, yeah, there's the other more. Stuff? Report, there's separate reporting of the CPA funds. There, there, there's certain restrictions on CPA and vice versa on the affordable housing trust funds. So you can mix and match them, but there are some different guidelines between them that you're going to be very careful of. To be careful how you spend your money. It's yeah. yeah. complicated. We, we've gone to several meetings and you have to actually Pioneer Valley is thinking about being a conduit but they charge a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of people are making... Well yeah what we found was that the uh, part of the the genesis for this, and I'll liken it to uh, TDR. When we first adopted TDR, we had a provision, we, we still have a provision in there that you as the developer could go out and find me as the farmer and strike whatever deal you need to strike with me. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're protecting my acreage, um, protecting adequate acreage, um, there's no limit. The state has a limit on how much it will pay for, towards uh, development rights. But we thought this might be a TDR might be a secondary market that would have no limits. Mm -hmm. um, we have found we have not had one occasion when a developer has actually negotiated their own conservation restriction. They have uniformly put their money into a fund from which we draw the town's matching funds for APR. Um, so when we set up the inclusionary zoning, which is uh, a fancy way to say affordability zoning, when we set it up inclusionary zoning, we did intend for there to be a trust fund, but the there are reasons why it didn't go forward at that time. Um, but we also didn't push it at the time because there was no money on the table. The biggest concern that the town finance committee has on the affordable trust fund is that there is a clause in there where the trust fund committee can appropriate funding separate from town meeting and they can extend the town's liabilities tremendously mm -hmm. so that let's say there's a five hundred thousand dollars in a trust fund they can go out and get 
They can leverage the money exactly to get a four million dollar project going. Now the town is on the hook. But, but it wouldn't have the town's bond money. Oh, okay, so I, the the thing is that was a statement made at the night of town meeting by the finance committee at the time. That's not true. And that was the first time that they had mentioned it to anyone. Yeah. Uh, town council was not prepared to address it. We certainly weren't prepared to address it. So we just said let's pass over that article. Um, yeah, as, as I've read, the, the statute does talk about the Municipal Housing Trust Fund has the authority to, to borrow. But um, I don't think any, anybody has the ability to borrow without town meeting oversight. Okay, I asked Joel Bard that question. He says, it depends how you set up the trust fund. You can set up the trust fund committee that they can borrow separate from town meeting, or you can set up the trust fund with wording that no borrowing can be done by the trust fund committee without the appropriate town meeting approval. But it gets very complicated, and we just never pursued that to go after the right wording because there's so much, there's a lot of complexity of setting up the trust fund and the committee. Who would be on it? You get a you know, and a lot of other things. And you know, so you're gonna the ideal the ideal thing is to see how I hate to use the word, but how simply can we set up this trust fund and the committee so that I'll just think outside the box. The planning board, I don't it can be done. The planning board is the trust fund committee. And we're going to if it's pot, I don't know that that's legal, so I'm just using that as an example. So the planning board is going to know a lot about the money because they're going to both approve the money going in and approve the money going out. Uh, the problem with that is they are also the ones that would go out and it becomes a very a considerable burden on a planning board or any committee to go out and you know look for, if they wanted to, look for someone to fund to. Or to Mike's point, if you let it sit there for a long time and just accumulate, accumulate. Mm -hmm. but, but if, if, if the trust fund borrowed on its own, I don't think it would be backed by the full faith and credit of the town of Hadley. It would be more of a revenue bond, I think. And it would be basically tied to the project. Joel has recommended instead of setting up a trust fund, set up, he's, I think he called it an, like an enterprise or stabilization fund. When you put money into it, it doesn't need all the reporting requirements, and town meeting could appropriate money out of it, just like they do with one of the funds now, like the stabilization. I think he, he called the stabilization fund, is what he called for. Two thirds town meeting vote, pull money out and put it towards a worthwhile project. And he said that would be a much simpler way to do that. He said you could still gain the interest on the money. So there's, there's things to be explored here. Yeah, what, besides, are, the, what are the benefits to having a trust then? You don't need to do all the record. You don't do all the reporting for the state. I, I do, by doing the, the uh, stable, stabilization fund or whatever or enterprise fund. But that is there some benefit to having a trust that you're not going to have there, Bill? Uh, well, sure. Be, well, you'd be out from under the reporting requirements, but on the other hand, you also wouldn't have access to the CPA money. Yeah. I don't think. You know. Okay. Waitley's got one, Leverett's got one. So we should just reach out to Waitley and just see how those poor farmers are fair dealing with. So uh, it does have to be created. The Board of Trustees has to be appointed by the Select Board. And okay. one of their members, at least one of their members, has to be on it. Okay. But it, they could appoint, and it has to be uh, no less than five. So they could appoint a six member board, which is us and one of them. Okay. If it came to that. Um, I'm not opposed to, to the trust fund by any stretch. I mean, it, I was one of the ones that voted that we wanted to keep it. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want to make it so it's not a, a burden to whatever, however it's going to be done. Because some of the, like I said, the reporting requirements. Well, it says the books and records shall be audited annually by an independent auditor in accordance with accepted accounting practices. Okay. So the town has an annual audit anyway. That would be a simple thing to audit. Yeah, just, just yeah, part just, of it. We've got this much money in and nothing went out. Yeah. Right. Where, where there, it gets more complex is you also have to separately report how you use CPA money to the CPA, whoever the powers that be are on that. 
Um, but the you know how where we go from this is not as important, I think, as the fact that we it's time to do something because we've got yeah. 575,000 reasons to do something. Yeah. Why don't we reach out to? I, I can give somebody away a call. So well, why don't you find out? How, how difficult is reporting under this? Well, yeah, but all what is it? What, if you would volunteer, yeah, I'll volunteer. contact Quaitly and see what they're doing, how yeah. they do it, yeah. um, and you know, find out how much money they have in their fund. Okay. Let's hypothetically assume that another 55 and older housing. Uh, proposal comes through us. Would we demand uh, affordable housing units as opposed to taking right money now, in lieu of that? Right now, there's nothing in the eight in the uh, housing that allows us to take a fund. We removed that from the affordable housing uh, bylaw, from the, from the senior housing bylaw. They have to put the housing in. Again, if we if we if we create this fun then we could put the wording back in to both of them north hadley hall would be potential it is a potential already because right. yeah, it's the zone properly existing structures wherever located um, yeah. but you know, well, we're talking about renting versus owning well this is mike mike's got a good point well, uh, you know the, the whole people need affordable housing because they can't afford to go out and get a mortgage. The, the, the affordable housing fund doesn't have to be for ownership. Exactly. But, uh, that's my point. I, yeah. it, can, it can be, it can be, it can be, rent, it can be, the money that the fund has could go towards a developer or the town to either own or rent. They, they, that doesn't matter. Yeah, because the, the price that you can resell one of these units at is not the market price. It's whatever a certain formula tells you it has to be. And so theoretically, you could pay $100,000 for a house. And if the general income level in the state or the area we're talking about went down, you might only be able to sell it for 90000 because somebody could only afford to pay 90000 for it. So this is the conundrum. The chance of that going down is oh, pretty low. Well, that's yeah. it. I just, you get my point. Yes. It's worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars in the market. You know, it might only be able to get one hundred fifty. So, what's the purpose of having an ownership or an equity interest in a piece of real estate if you can't benefit from it? That's why I don't think owning these things is wise at all. And, and there's always the question of where. Um, now, in our current senior housing overlay, we picked it in part because it does have proximity to to a bus. Uh, sort of quote unquote downtown services. Um, that's the problem you get with the inclusionary zoning on uh, subdivision. If someone puts a subdivision in on the Sunderland line, which is five, it's actually closer to the Sunderland bus routes than it is to the Route 9 bus routes. Um, you know, is that, are you, what are you achieving there? Um, whereas if you can get a contribution and put it towards something something where you want. Uh, and again, this ties in with our bond rating. If we had, um, um, with, with a sizable down payment, and if we borrowed only enough to be serviced by the annual income, rents, uh, rents and the annual um, CPA. CPA income, um, you could, uh, probably take out a pretty healthy loan at, at uh, AAA bond rating rates. But Randy is well aware of the fact that the CPA pot is not growing substantially bigger, but more towns are being involved. Oh, guess what? It is going to get bigger because filing fees are going up. Okay. They're doubling. <laughs> <You're> doubling? <laughs> this, there... the, the CPA uh, surcharge is doubling. So that's, really? that's the way they fund. So a mortgage discharge is $50 plus $25 CPA discharge uh, surcharge uh, today. Okay. On January 1, it's going to be $125 with, uh, yeah, 120, it's going up to 125 so I guess they're doing a, uh, 75 and then 50? Uh, 
Double yeah, the CPA to 50 and open the yeah. regular to 75? Wow. Yeah, so um, the, the, the increase is going to be directed to, that, that has gone through really under the radar. I, I just learned about it. Uh, so if you have any plans you've been meaning to file, <laughs> get them done. Has there any, been any discussion, I'm sure somebody has, as to whether it makes more sense to make mandate the inclusionary housing in a subdivision or to take it, as you said, and put it where you want it in that, let's say, Berkium's subdivision. He's got 28 lots between the two subdivisions out there. And what, what, what would he have to do today? The planning board has the option to require it within the subdivision. Okay. It is not the developer's option, it is the planning board option. But my point being, you've got 28 lots there, and let's say he's got to put four inclusionaries. So he's got 24 six to $900,000 houses and interspersed four $200,000 houses. Which he has to rent. So no, he could sell them. Whatever, but whatever, not, whatever not the situation is. Yeah, I know where we still So it does it make finish. more sense to have those four houses in amongst all that other stuff and have four elephants in the room, so to speak, uh, or to take that money and add it to this fund, and then when we get enough to build something that makes sense, because now you've got like people in the same place, and not to say that somebody they can't afford a six hundred or nine hundred thousand dollars is like, a bad person, like people. but <laughs> like I can get myself in trouble. There's no this. easy answer to that. The idea of inclusionary zoning is to intersperse them in the general population, yeah. period. Okay? Irrelevant of anything else. That's, That's the general theory. On the flip side on the flip side of that Forget the inter, inter, interspersing. If you've got a fund, do you build it up to your point? Mm -hmm. Forgetting the thing about the, the general interspersion. Um, that's a good question. I don't have an answer for you. There are arguments both ways. Our, our current inclusionary zoning bylaw, well, as originally adopted, it had three options. Build your units in your development build your units elsewhere in town or contribute to the trust fund. Mm -hmm. But then we never set up the trust fund. So effectively that option has been a nullity and it, it, it's removed from the latest version. Well, I, th I think it should be a goal of this board to bring a trust fund before the town meeting. I, I, think uh, we I think we need to do research on that. Yeah, yeah I agree. But it was not, well, it's not dilly-dallying. I mean, I don't have much time left. So there, I, I was digging through my emails and I found an email that uh, Jim had sent to Larry Smith with everything that we had put together. And Larry replied with some other information. So uh, I will put those into a, a new email. Okay. Yes, Everybody's so. going to have an opinion. We had a presentation over an hour. So was it two years ago, three years ago? And somebody from the eastern part of the state came. Yes. And the presentation was more uh, appropriate for, say, a Newton or a Wellesley than for a Hadley or a, a Shutesbury or a Leverett. It was just, you know, the fireworks were going off. Slow down. This is not what we need. There, there's going to be, to Mike's point, there are towns around us that have this fund that are working with it. And you know, to Joel Bright point, questions I've asked him, he's, you can set up the trust fund committee and limit their, within reason, you can limit their uh, freedom. Mm -hmm. Town meeting can do that. He says the state will tell you how, how much you can limit it, but he says, you know, he says you may be able to accomplish what you want. And really the goal we want is to have the fund, require town meeting to spend anything, yeah. and just manage the fund accordingly. And that's a, you know a very simple statement. You know that's probably possible, and meet the meet, obviously meet reporting guidelines for both CPA and this thing. But clearly, if you wanted to add to the stock of, of housing, you're in the level of interest rates. Now's the time to borrow. Uh, so what? Other thing, 
we found that was interesting is uh, I went to with another presentation through Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, um, and they had someone from Boston come out and uh, um, in in their eyes, I forget which agency it was, but in their eyes, a unit is a unit. So when you talk about including something in a subdivision that looks like what's there, you'd be thinking, well, maybe you're putting four bedroom homes in, you have to put in a four bedroom home. Um, but a unit's a unit, so you can, you can have uh, an affordable studio apartment, and that weighs just as much as an affordable four bedroom house. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> but the devil is in the detail, because as Amherst is doing this single occupancy units, Mm -hmm. uh, if it's on Autumn View Drive, is that, what, is that your street? Mm -hmm. If it's there, I think the neighbors would kind of coalesce and say, not in my back area. That's, that's, that's a problem as well. Right. Yeah, definitely. But it could be a resolution to a problem like North Adley Hall. Well, if it's a new subdivision, and you grant it, Putting it into an existing property, well, most people are going to look kind of very uppity by saying, you can't put this affordable unit in my, I can't imagine they're going to get a lot of support at a town meeting, mm -hmm. okay? In other words, you've got a $900,000 home, and the town owns a lot next to you, just assume this, and they want to put in a $200,000 home. So the people around the $900,000 homes are going to say, I don't want that $200,000 home next to me. Do you really believe they're going to get a lot of support fighting that home in town meeting? Well, depends, I doubt it. Depends how many cousins they have. I don't care how many cousins they got. I don't think they're going well, to have how do we handle? How do we handle a subdivision that somebody lays out a subdivision and they sell off the lots? They're going to sell two, they've got a, there's appropriate number have to be affordable. And, but they're With really permanent a deed variety of styles of housing, and we say they're supposed to look uh, like the neighboring houses. That's going to be the developer's problem to institute that. Okay. Yeah, they're going to have to, they've got to, they've got to put the appropriate deed restrictions on those properties. Yeah, our, our protection is that uh, in the, in the one we adopted, what the subdivision we approved after the inclusionary zoning went through, we put deed restrictions on two lots, or, or said we would not release the last two deed des uh, description, uh, deed restrictions, or we would not, deed, the lots, the we would not, lots. we would keep Two lots in covenant. In, in covenant, we would release the next to last lot only upon satisfactory compliance with inclusionary, and the last lot upon acceptance of the road. And he said he would take one of his apartments and make them affordable, someplace <coughs> in town. That's fine. We don't care where it is. Yeah. Well, I'll call Whitley up and see if okay. I get some information. Yeah. You know, my mother was a farrack, so I got a little pull in Whitley. <laughs> So um, I think what I'm going to do is just leave the, that yes. line on the agenda going forward, yeah. Yeah. and um, it, maybe we can loop in uh, PVPC. Yeah, Caleb will be at the next meeting. We can probably you know get something, and get see what he has. Yeah. Um, so. And as I was looking back, we did get a lot of stuff from Larry because when we were re sort of polishing the inclusionary zoning, we did take out some language, but we were definitely talking about whether to do this. But um, as I said, the stakes are rising, so, yeah. I have nothing else. I have nothing Motion else. to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving. So